welcome to this, and this will be my review for Dragon Gate's first pay-per-view, End of the Dragon. Um, just so you know, um, and also at the end of the pay-per-view, or end of the review, um, I will talk about Nigel and Miss Love as well. Lots of news happened today, so I'm just going to try to wrap everything up at once. Uh, before we get started, just to know, most of you, some of you already know this, but Mutant, a lot of people always ask me about Mutant. He is back. Um, I have his new account um, on my uh, site, or on the, in the description, and you can check that out. Um, if you enjoy his little rants and, and, and kind of an old old man, and he knows I say that lovingly, um, ranting about things, uh, there you go with that. Also, as some of you probably already know, Sanders Robin, who I talked about in my, um, you know, people I thought you should be subscribed to my recommend my recommended video. Um, huh, he went and got his <clears throat> video, or he went and got his account um, suspended, so there is his new account for those of you who... Uh, are not aware, so there is that, and so let's get on with the review. Now, let's get started with this right now, because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be, oh my god, you didn't give this a 10. Let me explain why I didn't give this a 10. Almost gave it a 10, didn't quite give it a 10, let me explain why. I have, First of all, um, I am not someone that is going to be as wowed as others when it comes to Dragon Gate matches. Reason being, I have seen Dragon Gate on a constant level, not just on ROH and, and through other means, but actual seeing Dragon Gate shows for about two years now. I, I've, I've downloaded the pay-per-views from Japan and also their weekly TV show. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm very familiar with the so style, and the first time you see Dragon Gate, you're like so blown away. It's like, oh my freaking lord. Second time you see it, you're still like, oh my freaking lord. Third time you see it, you're like, my god, this is still just, maybe not as good, but, but geez, this is still great. It's that sort of thing. The more you see it, the more you get used to it, kind of, the the, the less spectacular it becomes. Not that it it's not still, they're not still putting on great matches, but it's just not as spectacular. The wow factor isn't there. You notice some different things. The matches are still great. The matches are still good, but it, it's a different experience after you've watched it for a while. That said, also... There was definitely some production snafus on this thing that irritated me to no end. Maybe that's being nitpicky, so there is that as well. I'll talk about that as we go along. Um, but um, particularly the video packages, the, the highlight video packages, such as the Rivera, the Ode to Rivera package, which you know all that package, and then like the, the like the Dragon Gate little video package were were like sped up. Um, you could tell they were spread. I don't know if they were done purposely or whatnot, but the high guys just kind of like, oh my god, and they, and they didn't even look, you know, they looked like, they didn't even look as good as, like, the guys that would just be considered, eh, okay, not, nothing spectacular of guys that make highlight videos here on YouTube, on YouTube, not even some of the better guys on here, and you would expect that they could at least get someone that was at least as good as those guys. But then again, I'm always shocked that, you know, TNA and WWE sometimes aren't able to do that, so... There was that. Um, also, the fact that you know anyone that was using the in-ring mic, um, definitely there was feedback, and it wasn't mic'd very good. At least, at least on from what I was hearing. So I didn't enjoy that either. Um, God bless Don Marie. Um, Don Marie is a great woman. If you, if you ever read a lot about her, but um, her doing the ring announcing was, or yeah, the ring announcing was pretty horrible. Um, I don't say that to be mean, um, and I hate saying that because I know why she was there, and she was there for a very good reason, but it was, ugh, um, to be honest. Um, but pretty much that's the only gripes on the whole on the whole pay-per-view. So um, there is that. Now, before I get started, and before all the little keyboard warriors start typing about, see, this pay-per-view just proves ROH never should have got rid of Gabe. Before we even get into that, realize that this pay-per-view had pretty much most of the top talent from Dragon Gate on it, a pretty good selection. Then you had the uh, Chikara match, which had most of the best talent from Chikara, okay, and that, you know, we were aware that Chikara can put on great matches, um, was it the main event, which is kind of put on there to showcase Chikara, and, and, and so that and to add on later, and also the the angle 
with Jakara and Dragon Gate thing, while it's at least an angle, was just kind of, just kind of like, eh, angle to me, also, just something to gripe about. But, um, so, there was that, um, and, you know, the Young Bucks, it's not like the Young Bucks are a crappy team, or a team that just no one's ever heard of, if you're aware with any wrestling, you're aware of the Young Bucks are probably one of the best young tag teams in the last couple of years, so, it's not like there were, like, anybody, like, overachieved on this pay-per-view. That, that, that's what I'm trying to say. This was a stacked pay-per-view, and was was that way st stacked. If, you know, if if Noah called up Adam and said, we want you to book a show because we, we want to get in the U.S. market and we're, we're, we're going to try to put on, you know, these, you know, these taped pay-per-views, try to see if we can, you know, somehow get on TV, you know, maybe our tape shows on US TV and, and try to expand our market a little bit, and we're going to send over Kenta, and our main event, with the, I, the idea of our main event is Kenta and um, Nakajima, we're going to have Go versus Morishima, um, we're going to let, you know, you guys ROH, we're going to get let you guys have a match, and, and, and he goes, okay, well, if we can do that, then I'm going to put on the American Wolves, versus, you know, uh, Cena and Generico. And then they say, and we're going to send over the junior tag team champions and have them take on the Briscoes. And maybe, and, um, and, and we're going to send over Moro Fuji and we're going to have him take on somebody. You know, that's probably going to be a pretty awesome freaking pay-per-view as well. So just, you need to keep that in mind in this. That's not, I'm not saying that, you know, Gabe sucks. I'm not saying that Gabe doesn't deserve credit for putting on an awesome pay-per-view. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying that don't, you know, don't put, don't read more into this than what it is. This was a very stacked pay-per-view. The next pay-per-view is even more stacked, even though the tickets apparently aren't selling as good, so that's not a good thing. But, um, I will say this. For every person that keeps, that, that's going to write, this is a perfect pay-per-view, you underrated all this stuff, I, I'm going to put this challenge, because I know not all of you paid to watch this pay-per-view, somehow send some money Dragon Gate's way. Because if you thought this was excellent, they deserve your money. Don't just type it on here and say, oh yeah, you're right, we should send them money. Actually do it. So there is that as well. Because if this paper you did not say, you know, we deserve your money, then I don't know what would. So there you go. Um, so let's get started with this. Uh, I have dragged on long enough. Um, we started the night off with BB Hulk versus Yamato. Um, good match. My only real gripe with this match was the beginning of the match when they decided to do BB Hulk's uh, intro. If you are a, if you are familiar with Dragon Gate, you know probably BB Hulk has pretty an epic, a very epic, I, I would say, well, a legendary intro. Um, his intros, a lot of fans when he came to uh, did the Ring of Honor shows last year, a lot of fans were hoping that we would get some form of his intro. And we didn't. And that was fine, because that was better than what we got tonight. Because you basically stuck out Daisy Hayes and, uh, let's see, and, um, 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 Bobby Dempsey's sister. Not that she was ugly or anything. But they definitely didn't do the best job. I cannot believe you couldn't hire a couple of strippers, um, you know, to come in and, you know, do some dancing or, or, you know, that, that somebody didn't know somebody that could come in and do this. If not then don't do it, because it came off cheap, it came off bad, and it was just, ugh. With that said, the match was was, was good. Um, I gave it three and a half stars. Um, I didn't like it as much as some probably some people did. Um, D.B. Hulk did a lot of his Matrix likes moves. Um, Yamato was an excellent heel. Excellent stuff. Um, really, really good stuff there. Um, then we had the uh, Chikara, show, Chikara match, which was excellent. Um, I give it four and a quarter stars. Um, if you've never seen these guys, one of the things that I did like was that they did do a good job of, well, to me, at least they, they, they kind of explained who everyone was and, and kind of the thing. And if you've never seen Jakara before, hopefully you got a good taste of it. And it's very family friendly, um, probably even more so than the WWE to an extent. And anyone that says, you know, you have to be, you know, PG, you got, you, you know, that you can't be PG and put on good matches and put on entertaining matches. Jakar pretty much proves it every time they go out that that's not the case. And this was an excellent showcase for them. I think really, um, I think Mike had a lot to be proud of on that match. Every guy brought it. 
Um, it was very good. Um, you know, the guys that are entertaining were entertaining. The guys that needed to be super heels needed to be super heels. All of that led to, like I taught, led to an angle with uh, like a Dragon Gate versus Jakara type thing, and and of course the uh, the Rivera uh, tribute package, which was just my God, it wasn't very good. But uh, there was that. Um, then we had Dragon Kid versus Yoshino. Um, I actually thought this match would be a little better. Was I'm not gonna say I was disappointed. I just thought it would be a little better. But um, it was just kind of, you know, your 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 very good Dragon Gate match with a lot of you know spots and 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 flips and and not that that's a bad thing because it was awesome and there are I should say awesome, but it was it was spectacular to see. But, you know, it was just kind of like, ooh, look, they're doing a lot of pretty moves type of thing. But um, still good. Um, still very good. Really enjoyed it. And then we had the uh, the Young Bucks. Um, if you've never seen the Young Bucks, hopefully you got your eyes opened up a little bit. Um, I've been a fan of these guys pretty much since the first time I've seen them because uh, they definitely have a gimmick that is very much like... They're, they're definitely paying homage. I'm not going to say they're ripping off the Hardys because I don't think that's what they're doing. They're definitely more paying homage to the Hardys. Um in a lot of ways, and I am shocked that TNA has not signed these guys. And let me explain why, because it is no secret that fans from, from you know, the most, the most unsmart fan there is to, you know, the super smarky geek, you know, would love to see the Hardys back together again. Um, while this isn't the Hardys, um, it's pretty damn good, it's pretty damn close, and these guys are pretty spectacular in their own right, and just to try to, you know, gain some fans and try to get some momentum off of that, to me, is kind of surprising that TNA's never done that, but, um, there was them, um, versus Yokosuka and Sima, Sima is, a, is, is, you know, Sima is Sima, in my opinion, and uh, they went out there and busted their butts, put on a very good tag match, which is kind of also Dragon Gate's kind of forte in a lot of ways. I was surprised this was the only Dragon Gate tag match we had. Um, I was surprised we didn't get a six-man. But <clears throat> this was um, pretty spectacular stuff and uh, good stuff and, and thoroughly enjoyed that. Then we had Doi versus Shingo um, in the main event. Um... Great match, not a super great match. I, you know, I, I didn't enjoy it probably as much as some other people did, but I thought it was, I thought it was, you know, still a great match. Um, you know, different than the others, they definitely slowed it down. Shingo being more of a power guy, anyways, and uh, awesome stuff and an awesome pay per view. Excellent pay per view. Um, excellent first time, like I said. Um, if you, if you, if you've seen the pay per view and you didn't buy the pay per view. Find a way to either order a replay, buy the DVD when the DVD comes out, go to, you know, Dragon Gate, spend some money at the Dragon Gate site, do something, because if they did not earn your money on this, then I don't know what it would take to earn your money on this. Uh, like I said, 9.75, and that just has to do not with the matches, because to be honest, I thought this I thought this, was, this just seemed very much like a best of to me when I was watching it, and let me... And, why I meant that is there wasn't a lot of things to connect the matches together. Where I think even on the Ring of Honor, um, I think even on the Ring of Honor pay-per-views they did a better job of that. So there was that, and you had like I said the little technical issues, which did kind of grate on me a little bit. So I did, that, that just kind of, but that's just me. I know a lot of people are probably going to love this and think it's, and without a doubt, this is one of the best pay-per-views you will ever see, without question. Um, you know, best shows ever. <coughs> Wouldn't quite go that far. Um, there's definitely some stuff in Japan that would be, you know, blow this out of the water. But as far as a pay-per-view, you're not, you're not going to find this is definitely a top ten worthy pay-per-view. So, no question there. In my opinion, um, like I said, if it wasn't for those few things, to me, um, this is actually I said, I said it's top ten. This is definitely top five, um, probably top, you know, four, um, to be honest, uh, pay-per-views in my opinion, so there is that, but um, also, of course, today, we found out that Nigel has apparently e is either signed or close to signing a deal with uh, the WWE, like I said, when um, when Brian Danielson signed, it's about freaking time, um, Nigel, to me, more than any other guy that has been signed by WWE or TNA, 
is the guy I always struck, always scratched my head about, because this is the guy that has the look more than than anybody. Um, has probably not the most skilled guy, but is definitely as skilled as a lot of the guys, and has been for for at least the last two years, and definitely is probably one of the better guys on the mic than anyone that they have picked up. Um, you know, you've got a guy like Joe, which is really great in the ring, um, prob and uh, really good on the mic, but, you know, his body type, and eh, you know, probably not WWE style, um, you know, but then a lot of the other guys, um, you know, e even Punk, you wouldn't say Punk definitely has the body style type that the WWE definitely looks for. Nigel has always had that to an extent, so it's always kind of surprised me. And I'm sure we're going to get the, you know, look, this is the doomsday for, you know, Ring of Honor. You know, like I said in the last video, this is the one thing Ring of Honor, more than more than the, the lack of sale of DVDs, because I think there's ways around that, um, which is really what's bought, which is financially what's hurting them. Um, other than that, this is the, it, it's going to lose talent, because they cannot... You know, if, if the WWE wants somebody, there's no way that they're not going to be able to get them. Um, and Gary has always, and he's always even hinted at the fact that if a guy was offered a deal by the WWE, he'd even probably let them out of their contract in almost, in most cases. Um, so, you know, he, he's not going to hold the guy back by all, by, by most accounts. Um, you know, so just keep that in mind. Um, you know, Keep in mind, the WWE, when you're talking about main event spots, and that's basically what Ring of Honor's lost. They lost two of their main event guys. They lost basically two of their top guys, without question. Probably their two top guys. Um, the WWE, really, even though they don't have this, has the TV time for nine legit main event guys. They don't have that. That's one of their biggest problems. They have not done a good job of building up guys to the main event. So they don't have that. But they have legitimately have enough TV time for nine main event guys. Okay. TNA, they probably have enough for maybe five. Four or five, you would say. Main event guys, due to TV time, pay-per-view time, they probably have enough room for, you know, without getting into guys getting held back and, you know, and, and, and working, they probably have enough room for that. Ring of Honor, three to four. I mean that's all the main that that's the, the 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 true main event draws. That's what they need. That doesn't even include the the tag teams which they have, which they you know they're very good about making tag teams that can draw and that people want to see. Um, that's just singles guys. So there's no quite you know I I have very little doubt that they'll be able to fill those spots. You have Hero who looks like he's you know getting ready to make that. And I think he's with 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 Nigel and he with Nigel gone and 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 Danielson gone. He definitely can make that leap. A lot of people have always scratched their head why, you know, why he hasn't been in the main event scene. I think it's more of there just hasn't been a place for him in the main event scene in Ring of Honor. And so I would stay that. Um, you know, and I would love to go to every single site where I see, you know, the death of Ring of Honor. Or, you know, it's unfortunate because of all this stuff. Because people heard all these weird rumors. People heard the rumors about the bad checks. But then you didn't see the news from the sites who reported about the checks bouncing saying the next week well you know we announced the thing about the bad about the checks bouncing but really it wasn't as big of a deal as we made it out to be um, you know it sounds bad but it really wasn't as big of a, of a problem that we made it out to be there was a little bit more to it you didn't hear that from anybody no one talks about that that's what you'd expect because everybody you know you know I'm not even going to get into that, but you don't hear that side of it, so it always sounds like bad news. Hey, like I said in the Brian Danielson video, for Ring of Honor to to succeed, it's always going to have to be looking for new talent. That's going to be the biggest thing, particularly since when you look at it, you know, MMA is taking a lot of talent that would normally be in pro wrestling. You add to the fact that, you, you know, you, you can look in the indies now, and with, you know, IWA Mid-South, looks like legitly going under this time. Um, you know, PWG isn't running as many shows. With the economy the way it is, you just don't have as lot of as, as many indies just out there. And so there isn't that big group of top indie guys that there were, you know, five years ago that you could be able to kind of grab from. So 
there is that as well. And then, of course, we have Miss Love, who either her or Tina, and, and, and a lot of people are not blaming Tina, and I'm not going to come out solely and blame Tina, because um, she deserves blame for this as well, but her visa did not, she does not apparently have a working, I work visa for the United States now, because she's a Canadian citizen, so TNA let her go, because there's, you know, they don't know when she's going to be able to get a work visa, I would imagine with her, them letting her go, there's probably a little bit more to the story than we know at the moment, we'll probably find out more later, but um, I am shocked that TNA was not on top of this, was not on top of her about getting a work visa, um, and saying, do you need us to help you get a work visa, this, that, and the other. Um, pretty amazing to me. You know, she was part of arguably one of their biggest acts um, on in their entire roster. You've now basically just plummeted that. Um, I don't have a lot of faith with her. With her gone, I don't think the act will be as good. I was imagine they'll probably put Madison Rain in her spot. I don't think that will be as good. Um, she always seemed like she was definitely the better one on the mic. Um, she seemed to be able to just be able to keep, was kind of the glue that kept it together. And um, I think without her, it's going to be very bad, to be honest, unless they can pull something out. But the fact that they let her go is pretty kind of, ooh, wait a minute, there, maybe there's more, a little bit more to this than we know. Um, because basically, if she's able to get a visa, she'd go to the WWE now. Not that I think that she necessarily would, or the WWE would, would get her, because definitely she has to be made up a little bit, if you've ever seen pictures of her not with the makeup, and before she got into uh, TNA, what she looks like, but um, there you go. But um, with that, I'm out. like I said, definitely, um, if you've not seen the pay-per-view, definitely check it out. It is awesome, without questions, even with my reservations about kind of the technical issues that went on. Um, but with that, I've gone on far, far long enough. I'm out. Have a good one, and we will see you soon.